Hi, you guys. Um, good morning. I just wanted to say hi with my daughter. Um, Danny, can you say hi? <laughs> That's kind of her way. Um, okay, so we are in the hallway right now because they're doing super loud construction outside of my apartment. Um, and it woke me up on the one day that my husband actually um, was going to like let me sleep in. So that's cool. But it's good because I have to do this lecture for you guys. Um, because I tried to put a video in it yesterday and then YouTube was like, nope, that's copyright. So I'm learning good lessons. Um, Danny, do you want to <laughs> Maybe go get some breakfast? Yeah, okay. Okay, she's going to say bye and I'm going to actually do the lecture. Um, but um, here, let me flip my screen. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay. So I'm going to flip my screen. Uh, here is the um, paper that you guys are going to be filling out. Um, the first notes on the first slide you guys can put here for notes on the Ottoman Empire. Do you want to go get some food from Dada? Okay, he's in there. Go get him. Um, and then um, in these two boxes, I'll talk about it in the lecture, I want you guys to kind of fill this out because it's going to sort of transition us. Um, to talking about the um, Armenian Genocide, which is going to be the focus of what we're talking about today. Even though um, we are still talking about World War I, the Armenian Genocide takes place during World War I. And so um, that's why we're going to be talking about it today. And then you guys are going to be responsible for answering these questions after I finish the lecture. So it should be pretty straightforward. Um, you guys mostly today just have to watch the lecture and... Um, that's pretty much it. So let me just go to the slides. Okay, so we had just finished talking about the Russian Revolution in our last lecture, and um, that uh, you guys should be familiar with after the work that you guys did um, on those documents. Um, so we're going to talk about... Um, the Ottoman Empire now um, and kind of talk about the role that they played. If you guys remember, um, so okay, in green, you guys can see this was like the extent of um, the Ottoman Empire um, when it was at its peak, so 1683 AD. So this is many years before um, the uh, world, before World War One. You guys can see how large it is, but um, the Ottoman Empire during World War One is much smaller. So if you guys look down here, um, if you guys remember these nations that were um, kind of in like southeastern Europe where the Archduke um, was executed, um, if you guys see, um, these are nations like Serbia, Bosnia, um, Serbia, Bosnia, Romania, um, those types of places, you guys can see those are um, countries that had broken away from the Ottoman Empire. All of this was a part of the Austrian Empire at this point in time. Some of this was part of Russia. So if you guys can see, um, you know, they no longer had this territory here in Africa. So the size of the Ottoman Empire had really shrunk um, leading up to World War I. But the Ottomans um, that were ruled by a, a Turkish sultan. So the um, sultan, the ruler of the Ottoman Empire, was um, from Turkey. The Ottoman Empire joins the fight on the side of Germany and Austria-Hungary. Um, and so they played a couple really key roles. Um, number one, if you guys look at England over here and France, the Ottoman Empire is so disconnected from them that that really is not a significant role that they played. They really fought the Russians mostly. Um, and a lot of it is because they were really hoping to get back some of this land that um, had kind of like fallen away from their weakening empire. That was sort of their goal. Um, they fought mostly the Russians, but then take a look down here. Even though they didn't have this land anymore, like this is Egypt, you guys. This is one of um, uh, England's prized colonies, right? And take a look. I mean, the Ottoman Empire is right across from it. So they fought and targeted um, colonies, which when we talk about it being a world war, 
this is really why it was a world war, because um, it wasn't just these European nations fighting. It was also them having to come and defend or their colonies themselves fighting to defend themselves against enemies. Um, so those are sort of the two main um, roles that they played, um, except for, unfortunately for the Ottoman Empire and all of their goals, um, they had so many internal conflicts because if you look at all these different people groups that existed within their country, there are so many internal conflicts and revolts um, that were plaguing the, the empire that they actually ended up withdrawing from the war in 1918, which was pretty much the end. It was drawing very close to the end of the war, but they lasted most of the time, but not the whole time. And one of those conflicts that we're going to be talking about is what we're going to be focusing on for the rest of the day. So I want you guys in those boxes on your notes. Um, and if you guys have me like in a split screen, that's perfect. Um, I want you guys in your notes to um, fill in the two boxes. Um, one time identifying when you were in the minority, meaning like, you know, like, you felt like alone as compared to like other people that had people that maybe agreed with them or not even alone, even just like your opinion was um, not what everybody else had. And then I want you to also identify a time where you were in the majority, where you felt like, hey, most people agree with me or most people think the way or see things the way that I do. Um, the reason I want you guys to take a minute to do this, you can pause me if you want, um, but the reason I want you to take a minute to do this is because I want you to really think through um, what is it like to kind of be in the minority versus the majority because this is how um, the Armenians felt being in the minority. And we're going to talk about that um, in just a second. So um, if you paused me, welcome back. Um, we really want to look at you guys who were the Armenian people. Um, and so if you guys look at here, here was the existing um, Ottoman Empire sort of at its height. You guys see this red circle, these red circles, this is sort of the Armenian homeland. Um, the Ottoman Empire was made up of so many different groups of people, um, and they all fell under the rule of the Sultan. And this, they um, were allowed to kind of like have their own customs and their own religion and their own um, kind of beliefs and culture as long as they followed the rules of the Sultan, paid the taxes, etc. One unique thing about the Armenians, though, is that they became Christians. So kind of the head of the Armenian people um, actually adopted Christianity as the main um, religion of Armenians. And that was unique from everybody else around them who had adopted um, Islam as the main religion, including the Sultan. So the Armenians, um, when we talk about minority versus majority, the Armenians as a Christian people group were completely in the minority. Um, so what ended up happening is the Sultan um, of Turkey, uh, this is getting into like 1890, like late 1800s, the, the Sultan of Turkey um, actually started passing laws and things that made it difficult um, prior to this time period for the Armenians. So um, they had less rights than other um, Muslim kind of people groups around them. They paid higher taxes than anybody else. Um, they were not allowed in the army or in government positions, civil positions. Um, and eventually the Armenians started to kind of push back against this, push back and fight back. Look, look, we, you know, um, follow the laws of um, the Sultan and we should be able to have, um, you know, the same sort of equal rights. As soon as they started kind of pushing back against this, the um, Turkish Sultan actually sanctioned, like, open state violence against the Armenians. And what ended up happening you guys, is this sort of set the precedent for violence towards Armenians because it was coming from the Sultan. Um, and the violence that he was encouraging against the Armenians, um, they estimate that during like 1890 and the following like four years, they estimate that there were over 20,000 Armenians that were killed. Um, this is unfortunately just the precursor to the Armenian genocide, which takes place 
um, during World War I. Um, and this violence, people in the world knew and heard about it. It became known as, um, or, or the Sultan became known as the Bloody Sultan because of this, like, violence towards the Armenians. Um, so this is where, you guys, I was going to show you this cool video that actually gave you guys, like, first-hand accounts and, and pictures and stuff, except for I have access to the video, you don't. I tried to put it on here. YouTube got mad at me, and so we're doing this again. Um, so I'm going to just kind of talk you guys through it, and you guys are just taking these notes where it says, you know, the Armenian Genocide. Um, so um, the Armenian Genocide like, the path was laid for it long before, which is kind of what I alluded to in terms of, like, the violence. It sort of was, like, the norm. Um, but there were kind of three steps in this Armenian genocide. So step one, um, and you guys can kind of look at the strategy behind it. Um, they, um, they called themselves the Young Turks um, at this point in time, and their goal was Turkey for the Turks. That's sort of what they said. So they carried out the process in three steps. The first step, you guys, was there were a lot of Armenian soldiers um, at this point in time um, that were fighting in World War I. Um, so the first step is they ordered the removal of all of um, Armenian soldiers' weapons. So they took all their guns, um, which is suspicious in the first place. Ignore my computer problems. Um, which is suspicious in the first place. And then um, they killed and executed the Armenian soldiers. So I would be asking you in class right now, why would you kill the soldiers first? Well, the assumption is those are the young, able-bodied men. Those are the ones that can defend you. Those are the ones that can fight back. So once you remove the soldiers, then they go to step two, which was they organize and capture um all of the intelligentsia. The intelligentsia, you guys, are like, these are all of the educated, wealthy, influential people in high positions. Um, any Armenian that was like in this intelligentsia was um, rounded up, captured, and killed. Um, and so um, they, th and again, in class, I would ask you guys, what is the purpose of this? Well, first you get rid of the defense, and then now you get rid of the ability to organize. Um, there were no leaders left. There was no wealth left. Think about um, the ones who could really organize some sort of like effective resistance, organizing the people, leading the people, people that had experience with that in the first place. Um, and so you guys then, step three was like, the rest of the population, right? You don't have the defense, you don't have the leaders, and so it became easier to eliminate the rest of the weak population because they were disorganized, and disorganized people are easier to handle um, if your goal is to ex or is to eliminate them, which is what the um, Turks' goal was. So. Um, what they did, you guys, is they carried out deportation and death marches. So when they, I say death, uh, deportation, it's like, oh, they're just trying to get them out of um, the Ottoman Empire. That was not the case. Deportation is what they called it. Um, what it really was, was they took them on these long death marches up mountains, roundabout ways, the whole time just exhausting them and people would drop along on the wayside. And there were some awful, terrible stories of, so, I mean, obviously first it was the elderly, then it was like the young children. Um, and sometimes they would put you out of your misery, like once you couldn't keep up, they would just shoot you. Um, but these death marches um, were meant specifically to um, exhaust and get rid of the people. And um, another thing is they also um, forced the Armenians into these rail cars. Um, and uh, they said, oh, we're going to take you to... Um, you know, wherever the coast to deport you. And what they did, you guys, is they actually made the Armenians buy their tickets there and a return ticket as well. This is something similar that they did with the Jews in the Holocaust at first. Um, 
So they forced people into these cars. Some people died of suffocation because they stuffed the cars so full of people. Um, and uh, these were just ways to eliminate the rest of the population. So the aftermath, you guys, um, well, sorry, not the aftermath yet. So, so what happens is this was like, this was carried out not by the government. It was cut, carried out by this organization, which kind of allowed the government to not really have to take blame. Um, and what happens is it becomes so widespread that the killing of Armenians actually, um, they end up carrying out the killing of Armenians by like average Turkish citizens. Um, so the reason is, is because soldiers were openly killing without punishment. And so people followed. Um, you also had, and the video talked about this, um, in mosques, the religious leaders were encouraging people to kill Christians. Um, they said things like the gates of heaven would be open to you um, the more Armenians that you killed. And so this like state sanctioned, but like it's not really their responsibility, violence, um, you started to see just average people. It was just the, violence towards the Armenians was the norm. Um, which is crazy to think about. Um, and so you guys can pause me too if you didn't have enough time to write all of that. Final results, you guys. Um, in the end, there this is debated, um, but there were near to 1.5 million deaths of Armenians. Um, and it's absolutely heartbreaking because Turkey refuses to acknowledge um, this genocide. Um, and it absolutely was a genocide. There, they claim um, that they actually don't even talk about what really happened to the Armenians. Um, it's still a crime to discuss what happened to the Armenians in Turkey. Um, it falls under this um, this like law of your like insulting Turkishness, um, and so. As a result, the United States actually hasn't officially recognized what happened to the Armenians as a genocide. They've, like, said, you know, different things. Like, oh, you know, it's... Like, they just haven't called it a genocide, which is absolutely what it was. Um, and so, the reason, you guys, America and Turkey are allies. And so, the question, one of the questions I ask you guys is, um, is it just convenient that the United States is not recognizing it? Are they afraid of um, insulting their allies? Does the United States not recognizing it encourage other places that are, you know, not treating their people respectfully or not um, respecting the rights of certain groups to continue doing so? Because um, there hasn't really been an acknowledgement of it in Turkey. Um, so there's a lot of questions behind it that I kind of want you guys to think through. Um, and that's sort of the last thing I need you to do for your activity for today is just answer those questions. Please take your time to answer thoughtfully, thoroughly, um, if you want full credit on the assignment. Um, and yeah, um, that's it for our lecture um, today. I'm going to not get into that. Um, and I hope that you guys have a really good day.